can't remember ever wanting to do anything else other than be a musician. And uh, I played in bands all through my high school time in Australia and left school to go to university to diligently study law as uh, my father would have liked me to do. But I ended up being in a band which sort of suddenly had a sort of minor hit single. So I um, dropped out of law school and went on the road for about three years. I remember the energy from those times is like we're, we're, we're doing something, this is amazing, this is what we want to do with our lives and it's just feel everything sort of coming together and there's an electricity which is generated by the fact that you're, you're doing something, it's working, people like it, you've got a whole lot of people that are supporting you in that endeavour. You've got a road crew, you're on the road, you play um, concerts with people that have bought your record and so there's a real buzz and vibe and, and that, that's, that's fun, it's a great energy. And, uh, you know, part of me thought that in classical music that would never really be the same in a lot of ways. But, but in every respect, it absolutely is. Performing this Baroque music has an energy about it and a, a really visceral kind of um, importance and urgency about the bass line, um, how it propels the music forward, how it's really immediate. And it's, it's, it's the thing that, that makes the music from the very ground up really infectious regardless of what's going on vocally or instrumentally above that particular band. And in most rock ensembles, we don't have the regular pulse of regular rhythm like we do in, in these other musics. So the bass has an even more important role because that's your sort of fundamental role in this music is to propel it, to create this energy, to create this kind of funkiness, if you like, or this attraction so that the bottom part of the music has this great you know, identifiable or not identifiable energy, which takes me back to playing in a punk band in, in Canberra in the uh, late 70s and early 80s. And I think that there's nothing's changed about that for me from that music at that time to what I do now. The instrument that I play that I'm using today is a copy of an instrument that was made in 1745 by Josef Stadelmann in Vienna. It's called a Viennese bass or a Viennese violone. The one that I have here today was copied 10 years ago by Oskar Kappelmeier, who's a really leading bass maker in Germany today. The instrument that I'm playing is an exact copy of the bass that Haydn had in his court orchestra at Esterhazy, or the Esterhazy Palace in Eisenstadt. When I bought this instrument, the possibility arose that uh, it could be made with a detached neck, enabling it to be dismantled and then travel very easily. The neck comes off very easily and quickly. It folds into a separate case. The base body then fits into a specially made trunk and the neck fits in a separate case with straps on. And you know, you can say that, you know, an attachable neck on a historical instrument seems like an awful modern invention, but it was a lot harder to put a double base on a stagecoach back in historical times. So uh, there were many instances uh, of instruments that were able to be dismantled, you know, historically as well. The Society of Music is, is a, an interesting idea. When we play music together, it's like there's a part of that person that you only ever see in that environment. And it's you can't get it in a rehearsal necessarily. It's something that happens live on stage. It's that very personal communication with the musicians that come together and make something that's very special. And there's a very personal side of people which sometimes opens up in that interactive experience which you just don't get in another situation. My wife, she's a viola player, and I've been married for almost 26 years. And after 26 years and three kids in four different countries, you sort of start to feel you know someone quite well. But I found that when we actually perform as a duo, I get a chance to see some part of my wife which I don't ever see in our day-to-day -day, um, interactions or the things that we've been doing. There's sort of something that comes out sometimes when someone plays that, that it's just a moment, a way a shape is, a phrase is shaped, a, a color or something that suddenly I see something incredibly deeply personal and it's like just this, this glimpse into someone which is so intangible and so difficult and if you try to put it into words it sounds far less important than that moment really is. And every time I try and say to her, wow that was amazing, that was friendly, she's like, what do you mean? And I think, well, God, it was just that that thing that was really so incredibly important and special and and I think you know you can spend years trying to find something like that and when it does happen it's like wow that's that's very magical uh, I think w with our group with Hannah Hyden things like that really do happen all the time mm -hmm. 